When I was racing, you needed to be a millionaire to get, well, anywhere half decent. And I'm not joking you. These days, you need to be a billionaire. Peter. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, man, we're having some great weather here in Cork the last few days in Ireland. We're nearly at the end of August. Can you believe it's nearly over the summer? Good Lord. Anyway, guys, we're getting, getting straight into it with the... Uh, we're talking about racing today now. It's a great weekend coming up. Check out my episode from yesterday, guys, the Dutch Grand Prix preview. I'm doing an onboard lap. And we're going to show you the, the special areas of where the drivers should be improving on their lap times. Now, I will say to you as well, we're going to talk about uh, some racing today and how people start in, in racing, right? Because I know there's a lot of interest about racing and the behind the scenes, and we're going to go through that today. But uh, just one last thing about yesterday's episode. Check it out. We're going on board now. It was actually my home track, guys, Zandvoort in Holland. That's where the Dutch Grand Prix is on. I used to live there for a year. I won the race, a couple of races, sorry, not race, a couple of races there, a championship there. Uh, it's definitely a very special place to me. And there's some corners that the even the F1 drivers aren't taking right. Now, it actually, at the end of the day, doesn't matter simply because they're all doing the same thing. So no one actually gains an advantage that they're doing the wrong line. Now, in fairness to them, that can happen when you do actually go driving, that you can be a home, they call it a club racer, or I wasn't a club racer, but you can have a guy, let's say he's a club racer, okay? He doesn't try and go, you know, to try and make it to Formula One, but he, he'll, he'll race year in, year out at the same one or two tracks, and that's his place, and he'd know the he or she would know the place so well that they, that person would have an advantage if anybody else came along. Again, it's just track knowledge, okay? So it's probably very easy to understand that. So that's what you'd call a club racer. Now, I like I said, I wasn't at the club racer level, um, but I certainly had enough track knowledge. That's for sure. So uh, check it out. Anyway, the episode. Um, very special episode for me, so um, I hope you enjoy. So today we're going to talk about the behind the scenes of how does a driver become an F1 driver or an IndyCar driver now? Maybe some of you don't know what IndyCar is like m uh, very well. IndyCar would be the Formula One of America and Canada. Now, I mean, it's huge over there. I mean, it's, it's actually quite shocking to see how big it is over there but then yet it wouldn't be big over in Europe now the good thing is for Formula 1 Drive to Survive has definitely and I mean boomed the F1 market over in America I mean they've got three races there this year they've got Vegas Houston uh, oh god what was the other one uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it'll come to me but there's three races there this year so, I mean, <laughs> that just tells you a lot. I mean, England is the heart of motor racing all around the world, right? And yet, there's only one British Grand Prix. So, I mean, that just tells you there's, there isn't a market, there is an audience for Formula One right now, which is great. So, okay, where do we start? Where do we start? Okay, so really, guys, like... Let's say you do get to Formula 1. Now, even Lance Stroll said this, okay? Now, Lance Stroll is the Aston Martin driver, if you don't know of him. Uh, and he did an interview uh, a couple of months ago, I think, anyway. And in fairness to him, I mean, his dad is a billionaire, right? When I was racing, you needed to be a millionaire to get, well, anywhere half decent. And I'm not joking you. These days, you need to be a billionaire. And that's, that's coming from a very reliable source that I still know who races. It's ex extreme expensive sport to get anywhere. Uh, with, um, 
with Lanza Stroll's episode, uh, YouTube. I think it's on YouTube, actually. You can check it out. And even Lance Stroll said it is almost impossible to get to Formula One. And we'll get to the reason why in a few minutes. Now, so basically what a driver will normally do is start off in carts. Now, it's not called go-karting, it's carts or karting. Now, the sooner you start, the better, because it's like it's like golf or a lot of other sports. Muscle memory is very, very important because for me now, for instance, I started when I was 10. Now, when I was starting, that was actually quite old. I sorry, quite young, whereas these days they're starting off at four and five, <laughs> even younger. Now, uh, with that, I could jump into a cart right now and do a bloody decent job really quick. Okay? And you know what? I'm not trying to boast here. I'm actually literally saying, well, if I couldn't, there'd be something really fucking wrong with me. And I'm being dead, deadly serious here. So I'm actually looking at it the other way. I'm not giving myself a compliment here or bragging. I would be hard on myself going, well, hang on a second, buddy. What's wrong with you? Because muscle memory builds up from such a young age. Even if I jumped into a racing car right now, I'd still do a pretty good job. Obviously, I'd be, I, I know, I'd be incredibly rusty because you need to be working out in the gym constantly. But again, it's, it, what I'm, my point is muscle memory is a huge thing. And I think it's the same for, for football players, rugby players, golf players. No doubt about it. Definitely golf. I know that for a fact because I play. And it is one of those things that muscle memory really does help. So a lot of the drivers will start off in karting. Probably these days, they're probably starting off at five, maybe, at the, the age of five. Now, maybe they're not going to be racing, but they'll probably start getting some mileage in practice, right? And they'll go to tracks and practice away, not be able to race, but they still be able to get out in a cart. Or they'll do something. They'll go to a car park. They'll get, they'll get a local cart somewhere from someone and, and just have some fun and get used to it. Began, and it's very, very important for drivers to do that. I honestly believe that. Um, and again, all coming, stemming from the root, muscle memory, and it gets you used to everything. Now, a lot of the drivers, including me, will start off in karting. And like for me now, my route was when I was 10 and 11, I was in cadet class, C-A-D-E-T. So that's obviously, that's for the obviously young, young kids from eight to 12. So that was really, really good. Um, and then you progress up to the junior category and you do that for, for, let's say, normally from 12 to 15 or 12 to 16. Then you go into the senior class. Now, some of the names are different these days, okay? Uh, they, might, they, might, they might call them the junior class or the senior, but most of the time they will. So you'll do maybe one or two years. Now, I mean, it's very important for a driver to, to start off. And once he gets to the senior class, that's when you need to be really making moves. I mean, that's when you really know now, okay, are we going towards the next step? Because it's everything or nothing at this stage. I mean, you've got to be all in. Honestly, you really, truly have to be all in You've got to have backing sponsorship. You've got to have your own money of hand or a combination of both. And then you work from there. So once you get to like the senior class, now you see it's different for every driver. And I think it's different for a lot of different sports too that I, that I see these days. I mean, there's so many different routes you can go. For instance, like Verstappen now, he got incredibly lucky right he got into formula one at 17 i mean that's just un bloody unheard of and it wasn't guys because he was so gifted and special and wonderful right and by the way i'm a verstappen fan i rate him now i fucking hated what he did last year to perez but i'm still a perez fan at the start of the year i wasn't really i was off him but uh he's won me back but not fully all right so i'm still a verstappen fan here but i'm just giving you the reality here I don't know why they brought him in so early. It, now, I, I think the way that Formula 1 has gone these days that they're bringing in the young blood. It's the thing to do because it's no coincidence. 
there was no young drivers way back in the day. Then all of a sudden, the whole fucking pit lane is crowded with the young fellas. Okay? It took one or two teams to take a risk at a young guy, bring him in. If he does pretty good or well, then everybody else followed. So Verstappen got in young, but Verstappen went from karting. Now, I'm fairly certain, don't quote me on this, I think he did do one, one or two, one season of car racing. Uh, I'd have to check it, but anyway, it doesn't matter for this for this episode. So then he went straight to the Formula One. I mean, that's unheard of, guys. It's insane. Um, but hey, he's there now, so it doesn't matter. And hey, fair fucks to him. So you go from let's say karting into Formula Ford, Formula 4, they call it these days as well. Different different type of class, but it's pretty much the same level. Uh, you see, then a driver can go from Formula karting straight into Formula 3, right? Or like the Verstappen, straight from into Formula 1, which, again, that was a big step. But, I mean, you can, over, you can, you can actually forget about Formula 4 and just go straight to Formula 3. Now, look, looking back on my career, I actually, in one way, I don't regret it, but it probably would have been better for me to go straight from the senior karting into Formula 3 because of the grip levels. I get on better with, with better grip, higher grip levels, uh, whereas some drivers need to warm up to that or they just don't get on with those grip levels. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so there's like many steps. You can go Formula 3, then possibly Formula 2, and then to Formula 1. And again, it's so it's so bloody hard, guys. I mean, if you think about it, I'm sure a lot of you are up to speed here, that Mick Schumacher, Michael Schumacher, the legend of Formula 1, his son, Mick, won the Formula 2 championship. He then had to come into Formula 1 the next year, pay his way to get into the into Formula 1 for the year and then one year later gone gone nowhere to be seen i mean and this is michael schumacher's kid right michael schumacher the legend i mean it it's so uh it's so tough to to stay in the the sport um and even mick schumacher i mean jesus he paid his way but yet still couldn't stay there Still couldn't stay there. And, and I was quite honestly, I was, I was shocked. I do rate Mick Schumacher. I think he's quite good. Uh, really such a nice guy too. You like to see the nice guy win, don't you, as well? Um, now, you see, then that's the Formula 1 track. Uh, sorry, the route to Formula 1. So you go from karting into, let's say, Formula Ford, Formula 4, or maybe even jump straight to Formula 3. You can go straight to Formula 2 from, let's say, Formula Ford. So there's not, a, like, there's not an exact path getting to Formula 1. You know, it's not like, um, let's say, I don't know, Taekwondo or Karate where you've got your... I can't remember the belts. I used to do Taekwondo. I think it's white, yellow, green, blue, red, and black. I think it's that. There might be one other belt I'm missing. So it's not like that you have to go through each belt. It's almost kind of like you go from white to green to blue to black. In, in, in If you want to do a comparison like that, right? So, um, but I mean, it's all about getting to Formula One as fast as you can. Now, then I know a guy who actually is my uh, Rhinus VK. Um, I know his father, Moraine. Now, Moraine actually used to be my team owner in Holland in Formula Ford. Um, and Moraine then had a son. In, he invested in him, brought him up through the karting, the cars. And now Rhinus is in IndyCar in America. Now, Rhinus is a big name in, in IndyCar in America. Now, he's a Dutch driver. So I went... Now, I went the the IndyCar route because unfortunately at a certain stage you realize oh shit there's not much hope here for an Irish driver now I'll tell you why because the last Irish guy in there even though he didn't really he didn't actually consider him, himself Irish was Eddie Irvine and Eddie Irvine even had the British flag right when he was on the the podium and stuff like this so but 
yeah, you'd call him British, really, okay? Um, but he did have Irish roots in him. He was from Northern Ireland. So, apart from that, there's never been an Irish guy in Formula 1. And I honestly don't think there will. Unless Chase, the new guy who owns the, the company, he's an American. A lot of Americans love Irish people anyway. Even though, you see, the problem is, is that there's not a big market for an Irish driver in Formula 1. Simply because there's only 4 million people in Ireland. Actually, it might be a bit more than that. But anyway, it's about 4 million. Like, and if you compare Irish driver with 4 million people versus 60 million people in the UK, who are you going to go for? And I'll tell you what, okay, in case some people don't know. A lot of teams will pick the UK guy over the Irish guy because there'd be more chance of fans buying t-shirts, buying baseball caps, buying fucking gloves, okay? So if I was Peter Walsh from the UK, if I'm in Formula 1 today, now then there's a chance that potentially 60 million people could watch me on TV because they'll watch the British driver. Then take the Peter Walsh, the Irish driver, with 4 million people, then there's only a chance of 4 million people watching me. Now, again, you're obviously not going to have the entire nation watching you, but I'm just saying, right? There's more potential with the bigger numbers in the bigger bigger countries. And that's the politics of Formula One. And it's very, very hard for Irish drivers now, especially Irish drivers, to even get the sponsorship on, on board. Because in Ireland, a lot of our... Uh, not issues, I suppose. Well, maybe an issue. A lot of our issues trying to get anywhere in Formula 1, or motor racing, is... Motor racing isn't a big sport here yet. Now, with Netflix coming on board, oh, it's getting a lot fucking bigger. And it that could easily change in, well, I would say minimum three years i mean that's being i think that's be very generous to say that and then people would actually look at us but again you're looking at sizes of countries now you got america 300 million people and then you've got logan Sargent, who's in formula one and i can tell you this guys logan Sargent is there because he's american and american people are watching all right it's it's the politics it's the nature of the fucking beast it is the politics behind the whole thing. Don't get me wrong. I love watching Formula 1 these days. Absolutely love it. It brings me right back to my childhood, to my great days of racing. And even Zandvoort this weekend at Dutch Grand Prix is going to be special to watch. I'll, I'll probably even have fucking tears in my eyes because all the memories will come flooding back. Um... But it is a very, very hard sport to crack. It, it really, truly is. And if you don't believe me, what, try and find that Lance Stroll on YouTube. Um, in fact, I'd say if you even type in Lance Stroll, almost impossible to get to Formula One, or talks about how hard it is to get to Formula One, check it out. And, you know, I have to say, fair fucks, well done to Lance Stroll for saying that. Because a lot of drivers would say, oh, it's a, I'm here because I'm the best. You know, and I actually genuinely think Lance Stroll is quite humble because, well, first of all, he can't afford to be going around saying he's the best, right? So maybe that's why he actually admitted the truth because, well, his dad has bought part of the team and, well, dad's is, his dad is one of the bosses. So he can't hide behind it, really. So I don't know the reason, but you know what? Still, hats off to Menway for admitting it, you know? Um... And it's the truth. It's the truth. So that would be the progression. So like you can go the karting route here in Europe, go to Formula Ford, Formula 3, Formula 2. Then again, if everything goes right for you, Formula 1, boom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or you can go the other route, which I went. I went, uh, I went karting in Europe, Formula Ford in Belgium, Luxembourg and Holland. Then got a opportunity in america and canada went there and like i even i was offered the top seat in the top team in formula atlantic which was which would be the equivalent of formula two in 
which the one you see the support race of Formula One. I got offered that, uh, but I couldn't get the sponsorship. So unfortunately, it had to uh, had to pretty much call it a day at that stage, you know. And but I'm not the only driver out there that happens. So there's definitely two routes you can go. Um, now, I was offered a Le Mans seat. If anybody knows what Le Mans is, uh, not my cup of tea. Certainly don't regret it. There's been once or time times t- once once or twice where I went, oh man, I should have gone there. And then about five minutes later, I'm like, <laughs> no. Forget it. Forget it. Uh, Le Mans would be a dead end. Now, Schumacher came from there, but Schumacher came with money. You see. So he still had... He had an awesome manager back in the day, Willie Weber. In fact, I'm actually wondering, is Willie Weber... Where is that guy gone? Because I think if you had Willie Weber managing Mick Schumacher properly... Now, I must actually even check that. Because if he was doing it properly, make Schumacher be in fucking Formula One right now. Because Willie Weber was just brilliant for, with Schumacher. Uh, Jensen Button had a brilliant uh, agent too. Button came from karting, Formula Ford, Formula Three to Formula One, so he he skipped over uh, a year as well. So again, there's so many routes. Um, that people go, you know, you just got to find your way really now. You can make the best plan in the world, but things can still change. Things can still change. So, guys, I think we'll leave it right there now. Uh, Short and sweet today. Short and sweet. (coughs) Excuse me, guys. Sorry. So, check out the, uh, if you want to check out my preview of the Dutch Grand Prix. That is up now. Uh, Posted it yesterday. So it'll definitely be going through the most important corners on the track. Who is favorite? Uh, Who could make a surprise? Uh, And I think it could be an interesting race simply because it is a slow, tight track for Formula 1. Now, for me in my Formula 4 days, it actually wasn't because the cars weren't obviously big, uh, as big as the Formula 1 cars. So I think there could be a couple of surprises here. Uh, And I wouldn't rule out Mercedes either. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye bye. Peter. Wow. 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 Wow.